Okay, this is part three of uh, GMAX 1.2 for the beginning modeler, video number seven, extending the exercise we started in the previous video. In that exercise, we created a calibration box and we've uh, generated a material and applied textures to the top and bottom surfaces of that calibration box. So that's where we are right now. We need to finish up the step we were in, which was tightening up this particular uh, deal so this nose is up snug against the edge here. So we're selecting the gizmo over here. We've got the select and move tool. And if you look closely, <laughs> you can see the gizmo here. So we're just going to slide this nose up so it's just barely touching. And that's good enough. And we're talking about maybe an inch there. Tighten it up a smidgen, but we're really close enough. The wings look pretty good here. We could probably go out, go up just a smidgen on that. So we go up to scale and right click. See if we can just tighten that up a smidgen. All right, that looks good. So now, uh, we'll check this out. Pretty close. Pretty close. It's good enough. I think we're. Uh, probably within an inch of either side at least. So we have the top and the bottom surfaces now mapped. And they should be identical since these boxes are perfectly uh, proportioned. We're back to the top. So with that done, top that done we're ready to go to the sides so let's do the uh, next let's just close out this uh, UVW map we're done with that let's go up to the drop down which is probably what you're gonna have to do and come down and add a uh, mesh select if I can find it here mesh select under subdivision surfaces mesh select there we have it I'm going to select a poly sub object mode and then we need to go in here and clear the current selection. And we're going to select, make sure we have ignore back faces checked so that we're not checking something that we can't see. And we've got to select and do no damage tool selected. So let's select the front and let's swing around to the back and select the back. So now we got the front and back selected. Everything else is unselected. So we're going to hit the front key, which puts us in the back of the box, facing forward, facing front. And we're going to go add a UVW map to the stack. And we've added that. So now we're going to select the gizmo. And the gizmo needs to be reoriented towards us, so we just ch check, uh, scroll down and check view align. And that puts the handle at the top, the green side of the, the gizmo to the right, so now it's oriented correctly. Okay, so now we want to uh, fit this bitmap to the <coughs> To the texture, not the bitmap, but the uh, gizmo to the texture we were using, which is three view. And okay, <clears throat> now it's uh, precisely the same aspect ratio as the bitmap we're using. So now we can <clears throat> begin to we can go in and find the uh, front and or rear view that we're looking for. So let's kind of scroll in here. Select this. We've got the gizmo selected. So, if you're not careful, <clears throat> by the way, if, if you're in here, you're in object mode, and if you move anything, you're going to move the whole box and everything. So, you have to be very careful. Make sure you have the gizmo selected before you try to grab that grit gizmo and, and move it. So, where is that? There we go. There's the piece we need. So, as you can see, that uh, we're going to position it roughly there and then we're going to scale it up to move the wings out to the outer edges of the box 
about right there. That's close enough to start. And we're going to position this right horizontally. Oh, see this uh, cr this line here? That's the line we want to position it on, I think. We're going to have to tweak that a little bit because you can see the tires are cut off. And the height, I think, on this is sitting statically on the tires with the prop at the top of the box. However, this prop was driven, was drawn smaller than the actual prop, uh, about 12 inches smaller. So the circle was a little bit larger than this. And if we move this up, kind of a problem when you have the gizmo out of the picture here. We're going to move it up so the tires and that and the ground line across the bottom here is sitting right on the bottom edge of the box. That should be good right there. Now let's check the uh, edges. Looks like we can go out a little bit more on those edges. So let's uh, pull down where you can see the... That's uh, a bit too much. See that? And we're still gizmo selected here. So we're going to right click. We're going to scale this up just a smidgen. Tighten up too far. I'm watching this wing tip right here. We're going to leave it right there for now. All right. So we've got the front aligned and the back is also done. So in some cases, you'll have a uh, back view as well as a front view. And if so, then you can map those sides separately. But in this case, I only have the front view, so I'm putting it on both front and rear because there are times when you'll need it on both ends when you're modeling. So, okay, we've got the front and back done. We have the sides to do. Let's go to the left viewport. I don't know which one I need, but we'll start there and add a uh, mesh select for the left viewport. Let's select those two polys. back faces. Got that one selected. Got that one selected. Uh, looks like we're okay. So we've got the right and the left. I think I need to be on the left side here. Okay, we've got the... Uh, I'm sorry I cheated on you. I, I put those buttons right here so I don't have to go searching for them. Uh, let's go orient the UVW map gizmo now. To face us, view align. Okay, now we need to bitmap fit it just to get it uh, to the right proportions. We got that done. Now we need to go find the side view. Where is the side view? It's at the very bottom. This is going to be fun placing this one. Okay, now that we've got this, we can. We can actually move it up some because when I scale it up, it's going to go off go off screen. So we just we're going to have to just it's a hit and miss here, so you just have to play with it until you get it where you want it. So it's getting pretty close actually. We're going to move the nose to the front. Now, let's just do a little double check here. Notice down here on the bottom, you can see the leading edge of the wing. Maybe it's hard to make it out, but you can see the leading edge of the wing. We, we want this lined up with this, and we want the nose there. So it looks like it's a little forward. So here's where it gets fun, because the gizmo is off the picture. Let's go back to uh, left side. And try to do is see both both of these at the same time and have the gizmo available to me. So I can see that the leading edge is a little too forward. I'm going to pull that back to about there and then compare the noses. So as you can see I need to go up a little bit on the scale. So I'm going to right click and just pull this out of the way so I can see. We're going to go up Alright, it looks like I'm aligned here. My nose is getting 
pretty close and go a little bit more. What do you think? That's pretty good, huh? Let's give that a try. See how that works. Let's go back to the left viewport, L key. Zoom in here and see what we got. Okay, I need to go up a little. Let's go up to the ground line here. We'll tweak that a little bit in here in a minute. And remember I told you the prop is strip drawn too small here, so if it were drawn correctly, it should be at the top of this. Uh, I, I notice it uh, looks like I'm a little bit, I need to go a little bit forward. So it's it's really preferable to be picky right now because when you get these accurate, it eliminates a lot of frustration. It appears to me, and you could use the tape measure to draw a line here, but it still appears to me I'm a little bit too far forward here. So let's back it up a little bit. That looks right. And it looks like then I could scale up a little bit more. Get that nose back out there. All right, I think we're good now. So, at least good for the exercise. Now there's one other thing we can do to check this. If you look, we've got the side center line. We've got the front and rear center line. What we want those to do is match up over here. So we can adjust one of these. We may as well adjust the side. Well, let's, no, let's adjust the front rear. So we have to drop back down in the stack and pick up the front rear. And then we're going to move this around so I can see that gizmo as we're trying to adjust. A little playing around here to get this right. All right, we're going to move this up a little bit so that line over there meets up perfectly. There, well, it's dang near perfect. All right, well, that's good for this exercise. Pretty good. So now we've got all six sides ready to go. And uh, I'm at 12 minutes. Excellent. So that's how you create a cal calibration box. That's how you map it for textures. And... Uh, Size everything, get your sides and your fronts matched up with the uh, center lines here, and make sure that your wings are aligned, and so forth. Now, I think I mentioned in an earlier video, ideally, uh, ideally, if this drawing was more accurate, that this tail would go all the way to the end. All the data I have says this is the length of the fuselage. Yet this particular uh, three view I chose seemed to come up short, about 50 inches short. I haven't figured that out yet, but that's uh, that's the way it is. The newer three view I got, this was correct. It fit. So not sure what's going on with that, but it's uh, it's the way I modeled the aircraft. Anyhow, so this is what I'm sticking with for this exercise. So we can use the work that I've already done to help uh, demonstrate uh, the tools necessary to build the parts. So there you go. This is uh, basically concludes how to create a calibration box and apply textures to it for GMAX. So we have uh, we have the uh, validation and uh, of the of the calibration box for us. We have the three views accurately placed and you're ready to get out of the business. Now, if you want to do some verification of, of sizes and whatever according to your dimensional data, if you go up here to the Create tool and come down to the sub panels, you'll see helpers here. and You'll see that tool tip or not for this video running and down here you'll see tape. Well, that's a measurement tape. And If you go to, for example, the uh, top view and click say on the edge of this wing and go across to here you'll probably note that the length and the length parameter over here to the right it should be the same as what we keyed in um, 
when we calculated the width, which was 646 inches. And it's going to be close. 16,408. We're at 16,4. So we're off by about, uh, about three hundredths of a meter. So what is three hundredths of a meter? Let's see. In inches, I mean. So let's change to meters and inches. Do 0 0.03. That's 1.18 inches that we're off in the width of uh, at least where I drew this. I'm not sure how accurate my, I uh, started in. Yeah, I'm see. I'm a little bit long on that side. What did I do on the other side? Yeah, I'm pretty much on it on that side. So I was a little bit long. So maybe we're not quite. Uh, quite off as far as I, as this indicates. Maybe it's off by half inch. So that's pretty darn good in 54 and a half feet, 54 feet and 10 inches, eight, eight and three quarter inches. So I'd say this, uh, this setup is pretty darn accurate. Now you can also check other things the same way, but that's a handy tool. So you can back that off if you want. All right, I hope this video has been helpful to you. And if you have any questions or comments, post them down in the comments below. And uh, we'll be back uh, next in the series to uh, get down to some fun stuff, like starting to shape the fuselage using the cross sections here. All right, thanks a bunch. And uh, put some of this to work, practice with it, do what you can do, and and uh, be ready to get started creating some geometry in the next video. Thanks a bunch, guys, and uh, have a good day.